Hi guys, and welcome back to Doki Doki Literature Club Plus. So I wasn't going to stream today, but I started thinking about this game more and more. Um, and how fucked up it is. Uh, so we're going to jump back into it. I want to get through uh, as much of the arcs as I can before a certain point, because I don't know if I'm going to be streaming next week. I'm getting uh, the, the COVID vaccine on Monday, and if I have adverse reactions to it, I probably won't be streaming. I'll probably be sick. Uh, I took a few days off from work. Hopefully, it doesn't incapacitate me. When I get the flu shot, I get sick for a very long time. So, hopefully, uh, everything's okay when I take this uh, vaccine. But, yeah, I um, started the game, and it popped up to this. I remember the last game I left off, after I, uh, after I quit, Oh, I stream. I stopped the stream. It popped up to some weird OS. So we're gonna try to figure out what the fuck is going on. All I did was alt, uh, alt tab out and close it. But and it popped up to some weird OS, and then I just force closed it. So now I'm stuck on this. So I'm just gonna press enter and see what's going on with this. Uh, it's logging me into something. What the fuck is this? D D L C side stories files. So this happens after you beat the first. After what's her name dies? The fuck? <laughs> That's really weird. So remember, guys, this isn't suitable for children. Sayori's gone. Sorry, is not. Yeah, she's replaced by uh, Monica. I wonder if there's something weird with her. I guess I just gotta press that button. What the fuck? How come it, it looks like gobbledygook? Blah, 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 blah. I can't even read this. I, I'm not narrating this shit. I see an annoying girl running towards me from the distance, waving her arms in the air like she's totally oblivious to any attention she might draw to herself. That girl is blah, 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 my neighbor and good friend since we were children. You know, the kind of friend you'd ever see yourself making today? But it's kind of, it kind of works out because you've known each other for so long. We used to walk to school together on days like this, but started around high school when she would oversleep more and more frequently, and I would get tired of waiting up. But if she's gonna chase after me like this, I almost feel better off running away. However, I just sigh and idle in front of the crosswalk and let blah, 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 catch up to me. Whoa! Fuck. I'll get old Okay, it's an ordinary school day, just like any other. Mornings are usually more worse being surrounded by couples and friends groups walking to school together. What the fuck is going on? Did I, did I save Monica there? Meanwhile, I've always walked to school alone. Okay, so this is different. This is not the same as it was before. This has changed. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. But I have no motivation to join any clubs. I'm perfectly content just by getting by on the average while spending my free time on games and anime. There is always the club anime club, but it's not like there would be any girls in it anyway. Oh, yeah, that's true. Uh, not in Japan, apparently. Not as many. Um, here, God, there's a lot of women that like anime. Especially in college. The school day is as ordinary as ever. And it's over before I knew it. After I pack up my things, I stare blankly at the wall, looking for an ounce of motivation. So, in this... Uh, let's call it an arc. In this arc, Sayuri either doesn't exist, or... She was cut from the story somehow. That's... I don't know. Clubs. There really isn't anything that interests me. Besides, most of them would probably be too demanding for me to deal with. I guess I have no choice but to start with the anime club. Steve? 
Whoa! <laughs> that was freaking nasty looking. Monica. Oh my goodness, I totally didn't expect to see you here. It's been a while, right? Uh, I... Yeah, it has. She smiles sweetly. We do know each other. Well, we rarely talked, but we were in the same class last year. Monica was probably the most popular girl in class. Smart, beautiful, and athletic. Okay, this is a, the same as last time. Basically, completely out of my league. Okay, it's stock. That's stock. Talking. The hell? So having her smile at me is so genuinely feels a little. What did you come here for, anyway? Well, I've just been looking for some... Why is it quiet? Looking for some supplies for my club. Do you know if there's any construction paper here? Or markers? I guess you could check the closet. You're in the debate club, right? Uh, about that. I actually quit the debate club. Really? You quit? Yeah. To be honest, I can't stand all of the politics around the major clubs. It feels like nothing but arguing about the budget and publicity and how to prepare for events. So, I'd much rather like to take something I personally enjoy and make something special out of it. Okay, she's reciting words from the last arc. In that case, what club did you decide to join? Actually, I'm starting a new one. A literature club. Oh, God, what the hell? I hate that shit. A literature club? Literature? That sounds kind of dull. How many members do you have so far? Um, <laughs> it's kind of embarrassing, but there are only three of us so far. What happened to Sayuri? So there's her, Natsuki, and Yuri then. Somebody's gone. It's really hard to find new members for something that sounds so boring. Well, I could see that. But it's really not boring at all, you know. Literature can be anything. Reading, writing, poetry. I mean, one of my members even keeps her manga collection in the club room. Wait, really? Yeah, it's funny, right? She always insists that manga is literature, too. I mean, she's not wrong, I guess. And besides, a member is a member, right? Did Monica say she? Hmm. <laughs> Typical guy. Hey. By any chance, are you still looking for a club to join? Uh, I mean, I guess so, but in that case... Is there any chance I could do, you could do me a big favor? I won't ask you to join, but if you could at least visit my club, it would make me really happy. Please? Um, well, I guess I have no reason to refuse. Besides, how could I ever refuse someone like Monica? Sure, I guess I'll check it out. Awesome. You're really sweet, Steve. You know that. It's nothing, really. Shall we go, then? I'll look for the club materials another time. You're more important. Ooh, she needs an extra body for some strange reason. And thus, today marks the day I sold my soul to Monica and her irresist irresistible smile. I dejectedly followed... They like using that word. Follow Monica across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Monica, full of energy, swings open the classroom door. I'm back! Oh, she's glitching out. What the fuck, man? And I brought a guest with me. Eh? Ooh, God, what's up with that? A guest? Seriously, you brought a boy? Way to kill the atmosphere. Oh, Natsuki. Don't be mean, Natsuki. But anyway, welcome to the club, Steve. All the words escape me in this situation. This club is full of incredibly cute girls. Oh, the stock freaking... I have to read this over and over again. So let me guess, you're Monica's boyfriend, right? What? No, I'm not. Natsuki. The girl with the sour art dude whose name is apparently Natsuki is the one I don't recognize. Her small figure makes her look like a first year student. Anyway, this is Natsuki, energetic as usual. And this is Yuri, the vice president. It's nice to meet you. Yuri, who appears comparably more mature and timid, seems to have a hard time keeping up with someone like Natsuki. Yeah, it's nice to meet both of you. So I ran into Steve in, the in a classroom and he decided to come and check out the club. Isn't that great? Wait, Monica. Didn't I tell you to let me know in advance before you brought someone new? I was going to, well, you know. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't forget that. I just happened to run into him. In that case, I should at least make some tea, right? Yeah, that would be great. Why don't you come and sit down, Steve? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Yuri walks blah, blah, blah. Yuri walks to the corner of the room and opens the closet. Meanwhile, Monica and Natsuki sit across from each other. Still feeling awkward, I take a seat next to Monica. So, I know you didn't really plan on coming here. 
but we'll make sure you feel right at home, okay? As president of the Literature Club, it's my duty to make sure the club is fun and exciting for everyone. I'm surprised there aren't more people in the club yet. It must be hard to start a new club. You could put it that way. Not many people are interested in putting out, putting out all the effort to start something brand new, especially when it's something that doesn't grab your attention like literature. You have to work hard to convince people that you're both fun and worthwhile. But it makes school events like festivals that much more important. I'm confident that we can all grow this club before we graduate. Right, Natsuki? Well, I guess. She relu relu reluctantly agrees. Oh, I need to wet my whistle. I'm getting a little dry here. Such different girls, all interested in the same goal. Monica must work really hard just to find these two. Two instead of three. Okay. Before it was three. Last arc. Okay. Yuri returned to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before setting down the teapot in the middle. You keep a whole tea set in this classroom? Don't worry, the teachers give us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a really good book? Uh, I guess. Don't let yourself get intimidated. Yuri's just trying to impress you. That's not insulted. Yuri looks away. I mean, you know, I believe you. Well, tea and reading might not be a pastime for me, but at least I enjoy tea. I'm glad. She faintly smiles to herself in relief. So, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering how little I've read these past few years, I really don't have a good way of answering that. Manga? I quietly mutter to myself half-jokingly. Natsuki's head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something, but keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that can change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking, seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what uh, about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. Yuri traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites usually are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship be behind them is amazing to me. And telling a good story in such a foreign world is e equally impressive. She goes on and on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so reserved and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious by the way her eyes light up that she finds her comfort in the world of books, not people. But you know, I like a lot of things. Stories with deep psychological elements usually immerse me as well. Isn't it amazing how a writer can so deliberately take advantage of your own lack of imagination to completely throw you for, through a loop? Anyway, I've been reading a lot of horror lately. Ah, uh, I read a horror book once. I desperately grasp something I can relate to at the minimum level. At this rate, Yuri might as well have had a conversation with a rock. I'd expect more from you, Yuri. It suits your personality. Oh, is that so? Really? If a story makes me think or takes me to another world, then I don't really, I can't really put it down. Surreal horror is often very successful at char changing the way you look at the world, if only for a brief moment. Ugh, I hate horror. Oh, why's that? Well, I just... Her eyes dart over me for a half sp second, well, split second. Never mind. That's right, you usually write about the cute things, don't you, Natsuki? What? What gives you that idea? You left a piece of scrap paper behind last club meeting. It looks like you were working on a poem called Don't Say It Out Loud and Give It Back. Fine, fine. Natsuki, you write your own poems? Uh, well, I guess sometimes. Why do you care? I think that's impressive. Why don't you share them sometime? No. <laughs> she adverts her eyes. You wouldn't like them. Not a very confident writer yet. I understand how Natsuki feels. Sharing on that level of writing takes more than just confidence. The truest form of writing is writing to oneself. You must be willing to open up to your readers, exposing your vulnerabilities and showing even the deepest reaches of your heart. Do you have any writing experience too, Yuri? Maybe if you share some of your work, you could set example for and help Natsuki feel comfortable enough to share hers. I guess it's t the same for Yuri. We all sit in silence for a moment. Hey, I just got an idea. How about this? Both girls look quizzically at Monica. Let's all go home and write a poem of our own. Then next time we meet, we'll share them all with each other. That way, everyone is even. Um. Ah. Uh, I mean, I thought it was a good idea. Well, I think you're right, Monica. We should probably start finding activities for all of us to participate in together. 
I did decide to take on the responsibility of vice president after all. I need to do my best to nurture the club as well as its members. So, Sayuri's no longer the vice president? She's gone, okay. Besides, now that we have a new member, it seems like a good step to us for us to take. Do you agree? Well, do you agree if it's... Ugh, can't talk straight. Do you agree as well, C? Hold on, there's still one problem. What's that? Now that we've reached the most important topic, I bluntly come forth with what's been on my mind this entire time. I never said I would join this club. Monica may have convinced me to stop by, but I never made that decision. I still have other clubs to look at. Uh, um, I lose my train of thought. All three girls stare at me with dejected eyes. But... I'm sorry, I thought... <sighs> eh? The girls exchange glances before Monica turns back to me. I guess I need to tell you the truth, Steve. The thing is, we don't have enough members yet to form an official club. We need four. And I've been trying really hard to find new members. And if we don't find one more before the festival... I'm defenseless against these girls. How am I supposed to t make a clear-headed decision when it's all like this? I would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So if writing poems is the price they need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'll join the literature club. One by one, the girls' eyes light up. Really? Do you really mean that? Yes. It could be fun, right? You really did scare me there for a moment. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I'd be super pissed. No cupcakes this time. Okay. Steve, I'm so happy. We can become a fi an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? No, oh, thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think that we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem and to bring to the next meeting so we can all share. She looked over at me once more. I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Hee <laughs> hee. Yeah. I could, can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? I already feel the anxiety welling up inside me. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. I guess I'll be in my way then. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow then. I can't wait. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls, Natsuki, Yuri, and of course Monika. Will I really be happy spending every day after school at a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Alright, I'll just need to make the most of my circumstances and make sure good fortune will find me. And I guess that starts with writing a poem tonight. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Oh. Where's my... Oh, there it is. A dream. I was staying over at my friend's place. There were four of us. I drifted off to sleep while ev everyone was talking and watching TV. In my dream, I was still at my friend's house. The only difference w was that there were nails sticking out of the walls everywhere. And there was also someone I didn't recognize. The person I didn't told me a joke and uh, told a joke and everyone laughed. I woke up to the sound of everyone laughing at something that happened on the TV. So I, so the laughing was not part of the dream. It was the noise that woke me up. I wonder who that person was and how they knew to tell the joke at that moment. Huh. What's that? Dude, my mouse is acting really weird. Let me put my... Give me one second, guys, but clean this off. The mouse pad collects a lot of dust. Uh, so, let's see, fireflies, let's try that. Uh, Kisu! Sugar? Ah! I picked something else, that's fine. Hawaii.
Hi again, Steve. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Ha ha ha. Nah, don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I keep my word. Well, I'm back at the literature club. I was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping your pro- What the fuck's up with her face? It's really weird. Thanks for keeping your promise, Steve. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. It's making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. Dude, what the fuck is up with the freaking game? Things are wigging out. Oh, come on. Like he deserves any slack. You already had to be dragged in here by Monica. I don't know if you plan to just come here and hang out or what. But if you don't take us seriously, then you won't see the end of it. Natsuki. Why is she standing in front of the freaking... I can't read it. Natsuki something blank. Have a great... A big mouth for someone who keeps their manga in the... Something club room. Hmm. Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. I'm sorry, Steve. We'll make sure you put your comfort first, okay? Yuri shoots Natsuki with a disappointed glance. Um, anyway, now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you'd like to have an interest in picking up a book to read. Something's weird about Yuri. She's different. She's a little more confident. She's not as quiet as she was in the first arc. Either she's going to be the main focus of this arc, or she... Is... Did she eat Sayuri or something? <laughs> Absorber? I don't know. This is weird. Perhaps you have... Uh, you might pick up interest in picking up a book to read. Well, I can't really say no either way. Like you said, I'm in this club now. So it's only right, uh, it only feels right to do something that I'd like if you ask. Something like that if you ask. Uh, wait. Did you, I didn't mean it like that. Uh, if you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. Oh no, it's not that, Yuri. I want to try to be part of this club. So even if I don't read often, I'd like to pick up a book if you want me to. Are you sure? I just feel like, as vice president and all, that I should help you get started on something you might like. She reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. Then we could, you know, discuss it if you wanted. This is how the gr this girl accidentally be be being cute. How is this girl accidentally being cute? Okay, that's it. She even picked out a book that she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Yuri, thank you. I'll definitely read this. I enthusiastically take the book. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monica to kick off some schedule activities for the club. But that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in the book. I can't help but notice her intense expression like she's waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. Ugh. I hear Natsuki utter an aside from within the closet. She seems to be annoyed by something. I approach her in case she needs a hand. You look for something in here? Fucking Monica. Mm. She never puts my stuff back in the right spot. What's the point of keeping your collection organized if someone else is here gonna just mess it up? She slides a bunch of stacked books and boxes across the shelf. Manga. You read manga, right? Ah, sometimes. Manga is one of those things that... where you can't admit you're really into until you figure out where the other person stands. Yeah, in Japan, it's kind of like that. How'd you know, anyway? I heard you bring it up at some point. Besides, it's kind of written all over your face. What's that supposed to mean? Was he a fat otaku? <laughs> I see. There's nothing... There's a lone volume of manga amidst a stack of various books on the other side of one of the shelves. Curiously, I put it, pull it out of the stack. There it is. She snatches it out of my hand. Then turns a box turns to a box of manga and slips the volume right into the middle of the rest. Ah, much better. Oh, she has OCD when it comes to her manga. Seeing a box set with one book missing is probably the most irritating sight in the whole world. I know what that feels like. I get a closer look at the box she's admiring. 
Parfait Girls? It's a series I've never heard of in my life. That probably means it's either way out of my demographic or simply terrible. <laughs> Damn! <laughs> if you're gonna judge, then do it through the glass of that door. She points at the classroom door. Hey, I wasn't judging anything. I didn't even say anything. It was in the tone of your voice. But I'll tell you one thing, Steve. Consider this a lesson straight. What the fuck? Don't judge a book. <laughs> in fact, she pulls out the first volume of the Parfait Girls from the box. I'm going to show you exactly why. She shoves the book right in my hands. Uh, I stare at the cover. It features four girls in colorful attire, striking animated feminine poses. It's exceedingly moy. Don't, don't just stand there. Um, she grabs my arm and pulls me to, out, it's out of the closet. Then takes a seat against the wall beneath the windowsills. She pats the ground next to her, signaling me to sit there. Wouldn't chairs be more comfortable? I take my seat. Chairs wouldn't work. You can't read at the same time like that. Why is that? I guess it's easier to be close together like this. Don't, don't just say that. You make me feel weird about it. She crosses her arms and scooches an in inch away from me. Sorry. I didn't expect to be sitting so close to her either. Not that I can say it's a particularly bad thing. I open the book. It's only a few seconds before Natsuki once again inches closer, reclaiming the additional space while she hopes I don't notice. I can feel her peering over my shoulder much much more eager to begin reading than I am. Wow, how long has it been since I read the beginning? Hmm? You don't go back and flip through the older volumes every once in a while? Not really. Maybe sometime after I've finished the series. Hey, are you paying attention? Uh-huh. I am, but nothing's really happening yet, so you can talk at the same time. It looks like it's a bunch of friends in high school. Typical slice of life affair. I kind of grew out of these since they're... It's rare for the writing to be entertaining enough to keep up for the lack of plot. Are you sure this isn't boring for you? No, it's not. Even though you're just watching me read? Well, I'm fine with that. If you say so. I guess it's fun sharing something you like with someone else. I'm al I always get, cited, or get excited when I convince my friends to pick a, a serial that I enjoy. Well, series. You know what I mean? Huh? You don't? Um, that's not... Well, I wouldn't really know. What do you mean? Don't you share your manga with your friends? Could you not rub it in? Jeez. Ah, oh, sorry. Mm. I can go... Like I could ever go to my friends to read this. They just think manga is for kids. I can't even bring it up without tell, uh, being all like... Hey, you still haven't grown out of that yet? It makes me want to punch them in the face. Oh, I know those types of people. Honestly... It takes a lot of effort to find friends who don't judge, much less friends who, have, who are also into it. I'm already kind of a loser, so I guess I gravitate towards other losers over time. But it's, <laughs> but it's probably harder for someone like you. Hmm. Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Wait, which part? <laughs> I mean, I feel like I can't even keep it in my own room. My dad would beat the shit out of me if I ever found this. Is she he here? Is she saying that, or is it something he's hearing? Because it sounds like it's something that he—an inner monologue—but it's quoted, so I don't know. At least it's uh, at least it's safe here in the club room. Except Monica's kind of a jerk about it. Ugh, I can't just win, can or I can't win, can I? Well, it's paid off in the end. It paid off in the end, didn't it? I mean, here I am reading it. Well, it's not like that solves any of my problems. Maybe, but at least you're enjoying yourself. <laughs> so? Ah. Jeez, that's enough. Are you going to keep reading or what? Yeah, yeah. I flipped the page. Time passes. Natsuki is strangely quiet now. I glance over at her. Oh, she fell asleep. It looks like she started to fall asleep. Hey, Natsuki. Yeah? Suddenly she collapses straight onto me. Hey! Whoa, what the fuck just happened to her face? Those don't make any kind of letters. It's making a weird buzzing noise in my ear. Oh, jeez. Are you okay? Here. She reaches into her bag and pulls out some kind of protein bar. She throws it in her direction. Natsuki's eyes suddenly light up again. She snatches the bar from the ground and immediately tears off the wrapper. I told you... I told you not to give... 
She doesn't even finish her sentence before stuffing into her mouth. Don't worry, Steve. She's fine. It just happens every now and then. That's why I always keep a snack in my bag for her. Anyway, why don't we share our poems now? Uh, let's do it from top to bottom. Oh, you gotta be shitting me. Are you kidding me? Do I have a... My, uh, mouse is... Uh, it works? What the fuck? Okay, whatever. My mouse stopped working and now it's working. So I thought I had to charge it. I told Natsuki I was interested in her poems yesterday. It's probably only fair if I shared mine with her first. Okay, let's start with the things I don't like. <laughs> first of all, um, she rereads my poem. Well, never mind. I don't feel like giving you my opinion. Damn, that's harsh. <laughs> Then what's the point of sharing in the first place? I wrote this when I could have been doing other things. Uh, in fact, I remember how I s wanted to read. In fact, remember how I said I wanted to read your poems? That's what I had in mind when I was writing this. I wanted. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Aw, oh, damn it! It is. It, there's something going on with my mouse. It keeps freaking out. I want to help you feel comfortable enough to share yours. Like Monica said, I might plug it in the charge. Maybe it's a battery issue. I'll play with the keyboard for a little while. Like Monica said, uh, well, I'd be more comfortable sharing my poem if it was, if yours was really bad. You're supposed to be, you're supposed to show me some dumb poem and make and make me go, aha. Well, that's not as great, but let's show you what real literature looks like. And then you went up and ruined it. I hope you're happy. So in other words, you're saying you liked it. <laughs> Natsuki's retort gets caught in her throat. You're so... You just... You don't understand anything, do you? I already told you that you don't have to go announcing it to the world like you're all self-important. Pretty sure you never said actually said that. I say that to mostly myself. Natsuki really must hate me or something. I can't figure out if it's a win or loss that you like my poem. In any case, you still need to show me yours, right? Fine, I guess. Only because Monica will ha make me do it if I don't. Oh, well, it's the same as the poem last time. Eagles can fly, monkeys can climb, crickets can leap, horses can race, owls can seek, cheetahs can run. Eagles can fly, people can try, but that's about it. Yeah, I told you that you weren't going to like it. I like it. What? Just be honest. I am. Why are you so convinced that I wouldn't like it? Well, because. Everyone in high school thinks that writing has to be all sophisticated and stuff. So people don't even try taking my writing seriously. But isn't the point of poems for everyone, or people to express themselves? Your writing style wouldn't make your message any less valid. Yes, exactly. I like it when it's easy to read, but it hits you hard. Like in this poem, see every one. Wait, seeing everyone around you doing great things can be really disheartening. So I decided to write about it. Yeah, I understand. But the other nice thing about simple writing is that it puts more weight on the wordplay. Like I set, I set up a rhyme at the end, but then made it fall flat on purpose. It helps bring out the feeling of the last line. So you did. I guess more went into it than I realized. That's what I mean, what it means to be a pro. <laughs> I guess you learned something. Didn't expect that from the youngest one here, did you? Well, I guess not. I decided to humor her with that last comment. I don't really care how old everyone is, but Natsuki's feeling proud. Then I don't want to take that away from her. Who should I show my poem to next? Okay, Yuri, yes. Yuri is next. Yuri stares at my poem, and a minute passes, more than enough time for her to finish reading. Um, oh, sorry, I forgot to start speaking. Um, it's fine, don't force yourself. It's, I'm not, I just need to put my th thoughts into words. Hold on, okay, this is your first time writing a poem, right? Oh, here we go again. Eh, uh, yeah, why do you ask? I'm just making sure, I guess that that, I guess that it might uh, be after reading through it. 
Oh, so it's that bad? No. Did I just raise my voice? I'm sorry. She buries her face in her hands. I couldn't help but notice that it's been several minutes and we really haven't gotten anywhere. It's crazy, Rose. <laughs> this is like, oh. Uh... It's, it's just weird. That's all, uh, that's all I'm getting so far. And a little bit, uh, what's the word, uh, crazy is probably the better word, or, uh, insane, especially the, uh, the first, the end of the first arc with, uh, Sayori. But I'm expecting worse things to happen for some strange reason, considering it's, uh, it's these people. They've been throwing down subtle hints about the characters. But I'm feeling that it's going to be pretty good if I keep going. That's one reason why I've decided to play tonight. Uh, it, it might take Yuri a while to get used to new people. It's fine. I don't really notice. Uh, what were you saying? Um, right. It's just that there are specific writing habits that usually are typical of new writers. And having thought uh, through this, been through this myself, I kind of learned a trick to pick up on them. I think the most noticeable thing I re recognize in new writers is that they try to make their style very deliberate. In other words, they tend to pick a writing style separate from the topic matter, and they free form fit the two together. The end result is is that both style and the expressiveness are weakened. Once Yuri finds her train of thought, it's as if her demeanor totally changes. Her stammering is completely gone, and she sounds like an expert. Of course, that's something you can't be blamed for. There's so many different skills and techniques that go into writing even a simple poem. Not just finding them and building them, but getting them to work together is probably the most challenging part. It might take you some time, but it all comes with practice and learning by example and trying new things. I also hope that everyone else in the club gives you valu valuable feedback. Natsuki can be a little biased though. Biased? How? Um, well, never mind. I shouldn't be talking about other people like that. Sorry. It's fine. I'm not sure if Yuri's apologizing to me, herself, or to Natsuki. Do you mind if I read your poem now? Oh, please do. I'd love to share my thought process behind it. She smiled dreamingly, as if it's a rare opportunity for her. Which itself is kind of funny. After all, isn't this supposed to be a literature club? Ghost under the light. Okay, same one. The tendrils of my hair illuminate beneath the amber glow bathing. It must be this one, the last remaining street light to have withstood the test of time. The last to be replaced by the sickening blue-green hue of the future. I bathe. Calm, breathing air of, of the present, but living in the past. Okay. The light flickers, I flicker back. Gotta love cursive. That's a dying art. I'm sorry I have such terrible handwriting. What? I wasn't thinking uh, that at all, but it took you a long time to read. Oh, I guess I don't read script very often. I actually think your handwriting is really pretty. Eh, that's a relief. Also, I like the poem. Even though it's short, it was really descriptive. It wasn't too short. I usually write longer poems. Not at all. I'm really glad you liked it. I'll be honest, since our first meeting, first time sharing, I wanted to write something a little more mild. Something easy to digest, I suppose. Are you into ghosts, Yuri? Huh? Oh, actually, the story isn't about ghosts at all. Really? It must have... You, I must have missed the point. Well, I suppose you did only glance over it, after all. But remember that poems often express their thoughts, feelings, and experiences in their work. They usually do more than tell a simple story or paint a picture. In this case, perhaps the subject of the poem is not... is only being symbolically compared to a ghost. Lingering in her past... In her last remaining place of comfort, unable to let go of the past, and soon to be left with nothing. That's a lot more solemn putting it that way. I even thought about that. That's impressive. It's nothing, really. Well, it makes me happy that you think that. Just remember that it won't be long before you pick up on these things, too. Maybe you're right. I guess I'll have to keep trying. I'm counting on you. Oh, it's, it's Monica time. Hi, Steve. Having a good time so far? Yep. Good. Glad to hear it. By the way, since we are new and everything, if you ever have any suggestions for the club, like new activities or 
and things we can do better. I'm always listening. Don't be afraid to bring things up, okay? Alright, I'll keep that in mind. Of course I'll be afraid to bring things up. I'm much better off just going with the flow until I'm more settled in. Anyway, want to share your poem with me? It's kind of embarrassing, but I guess I have to. Aha! Don't worry, Steve. We're all a little embarrassed today, you know? That's sort of the barrier we all learn to get past soon. Yeah, that's true. I hand Monica my poem. Hmm. I like it. Really? It's a lot cuter than I expected. Ha ha ha. Oh jeez. No, no. It's kind of makes me think of something Natsuki would write. And she's a good writer, too. So I take that as a compliment. If you say so. Yep. If you're interested in Natsuki, then always keep a snack on you. She'll cling to you like a puppy. <laughs> Natsuki's dad doesn't give her much lunch money or leave her any food in the house, so she's a f in a fussy mood very often. But sometimes she just loses all her strength and shuts down, like earlier. This is just a guess, but I think she's so small because her malnutrition is interfering with her adolescent growth. But hey, some guys are into petite girls too, you know. Sorry, <laughs> just trying to look her look at the bright side. Do you know how to read? Do you want to read my poem now? Don't worry, I'm not very good. You sound pretty confident for someone who claims to not be very good. Well, that's because I have to sound confident. That doesn't mean I always feel that way, you know? I see. Well, let's read it then. Okay, this is the hole in the wall story that she showed me last last arc. Hole in the wall. But he wasn't looking at me. Confused, I frantically gla glanced at my surroundings. But in my burned eyes, I, see, I no longer see color. Are there others in the room? Are they talking? Or are they simply poems on flat sheets of paper? The sound of frantic scrawling playing tricks on my ears. The room began to crinkle, closing in on me. The air I breathe dissipates before it reaches my lungs. I panic. There must be a way out. It's it's here. He's right here. Swallow my fears, I brandish my pen. Well, what that symbolizes, I have no clue. So what do you think? It's very freeform, if you, that's what you call it. Sorry, I'm not really into, really the right person to ask for feedback. It's okay. Yeah, that style has pr gotten pretty popular nowadays. That is, a lot of poems have been putting emphasis on the timing between words and lines. When performed out loud, it can be really powerful. What was the inspiration behind this one? Ah, uh, well, I'm not sure if, how to put it. I guess you could say that I had some kind of epiphany recently. It's, it's been influencing my poems a bit. An epiphany? Yeah, something like that. I'm kind of nervous to talk about deep stuff like that because it's kind of it kind of it comes on uh, on strongly. Maybe after everyone's better friends with each other. Anyway, here's Monica's writing tip for the day. Sometimes when you're writing a poem or a story, your brain gets fixated on a certain point. If you try hard to make it perfect, then you'll never make any progress. Just force yourself to get something down on paper and tidy up later. Another way to think about this is, if you keep your pen in the same spot for too long, you'll get a big dark puddle of ink. So just move your hand and go with the flow. That's my ad advice for today. Thanks for listening. I kind of got that uh, impression for Monica last arc that she's kind of like that. Gross. She's a, she's a weirdo. Hell, they all kind of weird. I guess that's everyone. The music's a little different too. It's d deeper. I guess that's everyone. Or I could be wrong on the music part. I glance around the room. That's a little more stressful than I anticipated. If It's as if everyone is judging me for my mediocre writing abilities. Even if they're just being nice, there's no way my poems, poems can stand up to theirs. This is a literature club after all. I sigh. I guess that's what I end up forgetting myself into. Across the room, Monica is writing something in her notebook. My eyes land on Yuri and Natsuki. They gingerly exchange sheets of paper sharing their respective poems. As they read in tandem, I watch each of their expressions change. Natsuki's eyebrows furrow in frustration. Meanwhile, Yuri smiles sadly. What's with this language? Eh? Did you say something? Oh, it's nothing. She dismisses... Dismissingly... <laughs> it's a poem to the desk. I guess you could say it's fancy. Ah, thanks. Yours is cute. Cute. Did you completely miss the symbolism or something? It's clearly about the feeling of giving up. How can you? How can that be cute? I, I know that. I just meant the language, I guess. I was trying to say something nice. Eh? You mean you have to try hard to come up with something nice to say? Thanks, but I really didn't. It really didn't. 
come out nice at all. Well, I have a couple suggestions. Ugh. If I was looking for something uh, for suggestions, I would have asked someone who actually liked it. Which people did, by the way. Monica liked it, and Steve did too. So based on that, I'll gladly give you some suggestions of my own. Oh no, Sayori's not here, so I can't just tell her to fix it. So I have to choose one of these two girls for this next one. First of all, excuse me? I appreciate the offer, but I've been sp I spent a long time establishing my own writing style. I don't expect it to change anytime soon, unless, of course, I come across something particularly inspiring, which I haven't yet. And Steve liked my poem too, you know. He even told me he was impressed by it. She suddenly stands up. Oh? I didn't realize you were investing... So invested in trying to impress our new member, Yuri. Uh-oh. That's not what I... You were... You just... She stands up as well. Maybe you're just jealous that Steve appreciates my advice more than he appreciates yours. And how you know he didn't appreciate my advice more? Are you that full of yourself? I... No. If I was full of myself, I would... I would deliberately go out of my way to think... Thinking, oh, God. <laughs> Oh, you know what? I wasn't the only one whose boobs met. Oh god, I forgot about that. That's a low blow. I wasn't the one whose boobs magically grew a size bigger as soon as Steve started showing up. Natsuki. Well, Natsuki, that's a little. This doesn't involve you taking out your own insecurities, other like on others like that. You really act as young as you look, Natsuki. Me, look who's talking. You want to be edgy, bitch? Edgy. Sorry that my lifestyle is- Oh, what the hell? This is getting worse! <laughs> Sorry, my lifestyle is too much for someone of a mental age to comprehend. See? Just saying that proves my point. Most people learn to get over themselves after graduating from middle school, you know. If you want to prove anything, then stop harassing others with a sickening attitude. Do you, do you think you can counter blocks or talk to Oh, shit. Cute. The only thing cute, cute about you is how, you, how try hard you try. Well, be careful, or you might cut yourself on that edge, Yuri. Oh, my bad. You already did it, didn't you? Did you just accuse me of cutting myself? What the fuck is wrong with your head? Yeah, go on. Let Steve hear everything you think. I'm sure he'll be head over heels for you after this. Uh -huh. Suddenly Yuri turns toward me as if she's noticed I was just standing there. Steve, she's just trying to make me look bad. That's not true. She started it. How did I get dragged into this? Oh, uh, fuck! I, I guess I'm picking her because I, I have no idea what the fuck... What the fuck? What the hell is going on, Monica? <laughs> Shit! <laughs> what's the What's the point of your face? I don't think she liked me picking Natsuki that many times. Oh, there we go. Um, hey Steve, why don't we step out for a little bit, okay? <laughs> Sorry about that. They really shouldn't have tried to get you involved. It's probably better for us to stay out of this. We'll go back inside once they're done yelling. Once some present I am, right? I can't even confirm my own club members properly. Or properly. I just wish I was able to be a little more assertive sometimes. Oh, I can believe it, Rose. It probably does get worse. But I was never able to have it in me to put my foot down against others. You understand, right? Anyway, if this makes you feel like you want to spend less time with the others, then that's fine. I'd be happy to spend time with you instead. Suddenly, Natsuki runs out of the classroom. Oh, she's crying. She quickly runs away. Oh dear. Well, it looks like they're done. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. I didn't mean it. She's rocking back and forth on her desk with her palms on her forehead. Yuri? I didn't mean it. I, did, I believe you. I have no idea what Yuri might have said to Natsuki. Or did. S Please don't hate me. Please. I'm not like this. There's something wrong with me today. It's fine, Yuri. We know you didn't mean it. Besides, I'm sure Natsuki will forget all about all of it tomorrow. Completely. Anyway, the meeting is over, so you can go home if you want. She looks at me and she wants to say something, but she keeps glancing at Monica. You can go first, Monica. I'd like to stay a little bit longer. I'm the president, so I should be the last one out. I'll wait for you to be done. Well, I'm vice president, so please let me take that responsibility today. 
Kind of sounds like you don't want me around for something, Yuri. It's not that. It's not that. I just... I didn't get much time, a chance to discuss my book with Steve. It would be embarrassing to do it with you listening. I guess I don't really have a choice, do I? I'm sorry for causing you trouble, but... Oh, what the fuck? What the f I guess I'm not going to be discussing the book. <laughs> well, that was creepy. Yeah, it probably is the safe bet. Something bothers me with um with Yuri. I I don't know what it is. Although the day passes and it's time for the club meeting to like already. I've gotten a little more comfortable oh, I'd use my keyboard. A little more comfortable here over the past few days. Entertaining the club uh, club room, the usual blah, 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 blah. En entering the club room, the usual scene greets me. That's the usual scene? <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> Welcome back, Steve. Hi, Yuri. Man, I'm playing glitch... Uh, like, the glitchiest game ever. I'm not sure if it's me or if it's Yuri's expression, but the weight of yesterday's quarrel still hangs on the hair a little. The air a little, sorry. Um, she glanced over her shoulder looking around the room. Natsuki is reading her manga at desk, and it's surprising that Monika isn't even here yet. Suddenly, Yuri takes me by the arm and pulls me into the corner of the room. About yesterday, I... I really need to apologize. Nothing like that has ever happened to me before. And something just came over me, I guess. I wasn't acting mentally sound. Please don't think we're usually like this. It's not me, but Natsuki as well. Yuri, I'm happy that you were considered and apologized. And you don't have to worry too much. <laughs> uh, you don't have to worry much. Even though I've already been here a couple days, I could tell something was off yesterday. Maybe you were just a little extra sensitive because it was our first time sharing poems. But whatever it was, it didn't make me think any less of you. I already had decided that there's no way to, you could be a bad person. And I know that you're apologizing. I know that you really didn't mean it. Ah, uh, Steve. Don't say those kinds of things so frankly. They make me a little too happy. I'm really glad that you're such an understanding person. I'm re really glad that you joined this club. Everything is a little brighter with you around and... Uh, sorry, what am I saying right now? I just... Have you guys seen Monica? Uh, no, I haven't. I was also kind of wondering where she was. Man, Yuri, I guess you haven't either, right? Yuri is clearly taken back by how calmly Natsuki is addressing her. No, I haven't. Jeez, this isn't like her at all. I know this is stupid, but I can't help but worry a little bit. What? Why are you looking at me like that? Um, about yesterday. I just wanted to apologize. I promise I didn't mean anything I said. And I'll do my best to stay under control from now on. So, what the hell are you talking about? Did you do something yesterday? Eh? Jeez. Whatever's on your mind, I'm sure it was nothing. I don't even remember anything bad happening. You're kind of you're the kind of person who worries too much about the little things, aren't you? But I'll accept your apology anyway, if it feels if it helps you feel better about it. Besides, it's kinda of nice to hear, since I was or always afraid you secretly hated me or something like that. No one not like that. Not at all. I don't hate you. Well, you're kind of weird, but I don't hate you either. She turns to me. You're still on trial, though. 
Hey, suddenly the door swings open. Sorry, I'm super sorry. There you are. I didn't mean to be late. I hope you guys weren't worried or anything. Nah. Well, Natsuki was. I was not. <laughs> what took you guys so long anyway? Uh, well, my last period was in study hall. To be honest, I kind of lo just lost track of time. That makes no sense, though. You wouldn't have heard the bell ring at least. You would have heard the bell ring at least. I must not have heard it since I was practicing piano. Piano? I wasn't where you played music as well, Monica. I don't... Don't give me more credit than I deserve. I guess I've been practicing for a while, but I'm still not as good yet. Still. It must require a lot of dedication, so I'm still impressed. Well, thanks, Yuri. You should play something for us sometime. Uh, that's... Monica looks at me. Well, I am working on writing a song, but it's not quite done yet. Maybe once I get a little better, I will. That sounds cool. I look forward to it. Is that so? In that case, I won't let you down, Steve. She smiles sweetly. Ah, uh, I didn't mean any pressure or anything like that. Ah, eh, don't worry. I was hoping that I would share you with you anyway. I guess that's why I've been practicing so much recently. I see. I'm not sure if Bonica was referring to the whole club or just me. In that case, best of luck. Thanks. So I didn't miss anything, did I? No, not really. I chose not to bring anything up about the three of that the three of us talked about. Besides, Natsuki was already had already run off to the closet. Steve, um, since your compliments put me in a good mood, I was wondering if you would like to spend some time together today. I mean, in the club. I suppose so. I don't think I can say no to you after you gave after that book you gave me. Well, I guess I, I need to make sure Natsuki isn't waiting for me. After we finish reading it. I guess she's, she, she's fine. She's reading over there, see? Don't think about her so much. She's used to being ignored. Come on, we're going over here. What's the story about anyway? Why did it just cut to black like that? Well, um... I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Marco. There's an ominous looking ice symbol on the front cover. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human exp <laughs> experiment prison. And the people trapped in there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. But the facility gets even worse and they start selectively breeding by cutting off the limbs and affixing them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. But anyway, I'm really into it. The book, I mean. Not the thing about the limbs. That That's kind of... That's kind of dark, isn't it? Yuri made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so it... That dark turn came from nowhere. Ah, uh, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Steve? Are you not a fan of that sort of thing? No, it's not that. I mean, I could definitely enjoy those kinds of stories too, so don't worry. I hope so. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri was into those things. She's so shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. It's just that kind of story is the kind that challenges you to look at life from a different, new, strange new perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. <laughs> then suddenly, I'm rambling, aren't I? Not again. I'm sorry. Hey, don't apologize. I haven't lost in interest in or anything. Well, I guess it's alright. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts, my whole body gets incredibly... What? What did she say? Oh, it doesn't tell me on the mystery. Weird. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So, I'm sorry if I end up saying, the, saying strange, something strange. And please stop me if I start talking too much. That's... I don't really think you need to worry. That just means that you're passionate about reading. The least I can do is listen. It is the literature club after all. Uh, that's, well, that's true. In fact, I might as well get started re by reading it, right? Yes. Oof. What the fuck? I mean, you don't have to, but what am I saying? Let me just get the book. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put in my bag. All right, it's, it's fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Ah, uh, yeah. Are you sure? You seem a little apprehensive. That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. That is, reading in the company of, of others. I see. 
Well, just tell me if I end up distracting you or something. Alright. I open up the book and start the prologue. You seem to be able to pick up on bad vibes easy. I've seen- I've actually watched a hell of a lot of horror anime. Um... And I'm big on thriller uh, movies and and uh, and animes and art forms and media, so I it's kind of easy for me to pick up some of this stuff, like vibes. Uh, I open up the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Not to mention, I run into a lot of uh, questionable people in my walks of life, so I've actually walked around with, or, you know, I've run into people that are kind of jacked up. Uh, maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat confor comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. I glance over. It looks like she's reading a book for. She's reading from my book instead. Sorry! I was just bathing in the feeling of your body. What? What the hell did she just say? I'm bathing in the feeling of your body? Yuri, you really want to apologize a lot, don't you? I, I do? I don't really mean to. Sorry. I mean... <laughs> Here, this book should work, right? I slide my desk up against... I slide my desk up uh, until it's up against Yuri's and then hold my book more between the two of them, okay. Ah, uh, I suppose so. She timidly closes- she closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so I instead use my right hand to hold the book open. I guess that makes kinda- it kinda difficult to turn the page. Here. Yuri takes her left arm and puts the- holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. Ah. I do the same with my right arm, so I'll- on the right side of the book. That way, when I turn a page and Yuri slides it under her thumb after flips on our side, but in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer than before. It's actually kind of distracting. It's as if I feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Are you ready? Eh? To turn the page. Oh, sorry. I think I got a little distracted for a second. I glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep my pace with her. Ah, that's okay. We're not used to... You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. Oh, yandere. It's probably the best I can do. Since I've been so patient with me. Oh, you've been so patient with me. Yeah, sure. Thanks. We continue reading. Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she's finished the page before me, so I turn it my own voli volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange. My thumb gently lets go of the page, letting it flutter over to her side as she catches it under her thumb. Hey, Yuri? This might be a silly thought, but the main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. Eh? <laughs> no, I don't relate to this character at all. Definitely not. Really? I was just thinking the way she second guesses things she says and all that. <laughs> That's what you were talking about. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about her. Something else? Never mind. We didn't even get that far yet. So you don't know why... So I don't know why that came to my head. Ah. Uh, are you feeling alright? Eh... <laughs> She's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. You can rest if you're not feeling if you're feeling sick or something. Your breathing is a little my breathing. She puts her hands on her chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I didn't even notice. Anyway, I'm fine. I just need some water. All right, don't push yourself. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth is that about? Steve, did something happen just now? I have no idea. Yuri was acting a little strange, I guess. So you don't know anything. Sorry, I can't say I do. Are you worried about her? Oh, no, no, not really. 
I was just making sure that you didn't do anything to her. Damn! <laughs> no, nothing. Alright. Don't worry, I believe you, silly. Yuri has this thing she does sometimes. It's, not, it's nothing alarming. Alright, if you say so. Anyway, why don't we start with sharing our poems with each other? Eh, you sh shouldn't we wait for Yuri? Well, she might be a while, so I figured we'd just start without her. Is that okay? Yeah. I was just asking. I stand up. I make a mental note of where I left off in the book, then slip it back into my bag. Uh, we'll go straight down, like usual. Start with Natsuki. Well, it's not terrible, but it's pretty disappointing after your last one. Then again, if this one is as good as your last one, then I'd be completely pissed. Well, I guess I wanted to try something different this time. Fair enough, you're still new to this, so I wouldn't expect you to find your style right away. I mean, everyone in the club really writes differently from each other. Maybe you'll find a little influence for all of us. For instance, I noticed that you're spending some time with Yuri today. Not that I care who you spend your time with. After all, I was taught never to expect anything from anyone, so it's not like I was waiting for you or anything. Okay, Tsurure. Still, you should at least look over my poem. You'll probably be able to learn something from it. What the fuck did she write? Okay, this makes no sense. This is like... SSBG. No, this has no... There's no code in this, I don't think. T... What the hell? I don't see any kind of pattern in it. Huh, I don't know. Steve, why didn't you come to read with me today? I was waiting for you. I was waiting for you for a long time. It was the only thing I had to look forward to today. Why didn't you ruin it? Why do you like Yuri more? I think you're better off not associating with her. What the fuck? Are you listening to me? Um, Yuri is a, is a sick freak. That's why you should... Oh, shit. That's why... That should be obvious by now. So just play with me instead, okay? You don't hate me, Steve, do you? Do you hate me? Do you want to make me go home crying? The club is the only place I feel safe. Don't ruin that for me. Don't ruin it. Please. Just stop talking to Yuri. Play with me instead. It's all I have. Play with me. Play with me. Whoa, shit! <laughs> what the fuck just happened? Okay, that was weird. I had a, t a little taken back by that a little bit. <laughs> Hi again, Steve. How's the writing going? Alright, I guess. That was strange. My Google assistant just started blabbing to me. Alright, I guess. I guess I'll take that. As long as you're not going bad. I'm happy that you're applying yourself. Maybe soon you'll come up with a masterpiece. I wouldn't count on that. You never know. Want to share what you... Fuck, I'm, I'm still a little weirded out by that. Want to share what you wrote today? What the fuck happened to Natsuki? <laughs> oh, that's fucking weird. I'm sure... Sure, here you go. I, p I give my poem to Monoka. Alright. Great job, Steve. I was... I was going O oh, in my head while reading it. It's really metaphorical. Not sure why, but I didn't expect you to go f for something so deep. I guess I underestimated you. It's easiest for me to keep everyone's expectations low. That way, it always counts when I put in some effort. That's not very fair. Well, I guess it worked anyway. You know that Yuri likes this kind of writing, right? Writing that's full of imagery and symbolism? Sometimes I feel like Yuri's mind is just totally detached from reality. I don't mean that, like, it's a bad thing, though. But sometimes I get the impression that she's just totally given up on people. She spends so much time in her own head that it's probably much more interesting of a place for her. 
But that's why she gets so happy when you treat her with kindness. I don't think she used to being indulged like that. She must be really starved for social interaction, so don't, I don't, so don't blame her for coming on a little strongly, like earlier. I think if she gets too stimulated, she ends up withdrawing and looking for her alone time. Suddenly, the door opens. Yuri, I'm back. Did I miss anything? Not really. I guess we all started sharing our poems with each other. Eh? Already? I'm sorry for being late. No need to be. No need to apologize. We still have plenty of time. I'm glad. So I'm glad that you took all the time you needed. All right. Thanks, Monica. I suppose I should get my poem now. But anyway, you want to read my poem now? I like the way this one turned out, so I hope you do too. Save me. The colors won't. The colors they won't. Bright, beautiful. Wait, it's missing. Beautiful colors. It's missing letters. That's kind of interesting. Flashing. Why is she not using uh, vowels? Certain vowels. Piercing. Red, green, blue. And endless California of meaningless noise. The noise won't stop. Violet. Grating. Something. Speaking. Screeching. Piercing. Cosine. Sine, cosine, tangent. This is just like that poem from last time. Okay. Like playing blank on a chalkboard on a turntable. Like playing a knife on a breathing ribcage. Okay, that's new. Endless pain of meaninglessness. Delete her. <laughs> Delete her. Sorry, I know it's kind of abstract. I'm just trying to, um, well, never mind. There's no point in explaining anyway. Here's Monica's writing tip of the day. Sometimes you'll find yourself facing a difficult decision. When that happens, don't forget to save your game. You'll never know when, um, well, who am I talking to? Can you hear me? Tell me you can hear me. Anything. Please help me. That's my advice for today. What the fuck? Please help me. Who, who the hell are you? Thanks for listening. What? Oh, Yuri, you're next. I've been waiting for this. Let's see what you've written for today. Yuri smiles and takes a deep breath. I like just holding it. Oh, I mean, the poem turned out good. It's, uh, well, there's some things that... You could work on, but that doesn't really matter. It feels like anything written by you is a treasure. Oh shit, she's acting like uh, Sayori did. <laughs> that came out a little awkward. Let's move on. Here's the poem I wrote. You don't have to like it or anything. Wheel. A rotating wheel, turning an axle, grinding bolt head, linear gearbox, falling sky, seven holy, holy stakes, a dock ship, a portal to another world, a Thin rope tied to a thick rope. A torn harness. Parabolic gearbox. Expanding universe. Time controlled by slipping cogwheels. Existence of God. Swimming with open water in all directions. Drowning. A prayer written in blood. A prayer written in time devouring snakes with human eyes. A thread connecting all living human eyes. A kaleidoscope of holy stakes. Exponential gearbox. A Sky of exploding stars, God disproving of the existence of God. A wheel rotating in six dimensions, 40 gears in a ticking box. A clock that ticks one second for every rotation of the planet. A clock that ticks 40 times every time it ticks one second a second time. A bolt head of holy stakes tied to the existence of a dock ship to another world. A kaleidoscope of blood written in four clocks. A time-devouring prayer connecting a sky of 40 gears and open human eyes in all directions. Breathing gearbox, breathing bolthead, breathing ship, breathing portal, breathing snakes, breathing God, breathing blood, breathing holy stakes, breathing human eyes, breathing time, breathing player, breathing sky, breathing wheel. What the fuck is this chick writing about? <laughs> it doesn't really matter what it's about. My mind has been a little hyperactive lately, so I had to take it out on your pen. Uh, that's a pen full of 
your backpack yesterday. I took it home for safekeeping, and he she stole a pin from you and took it out on her. What the hell? This chick is klepto. Okay, I still really like the way it writes, so I wrote this poem with it, and you're you're touching it. <laughs> I'm okay. What did I just? Can I pretend this conversation never happened? Can you keep the you can keep the poem though? Okay, this is a special poem. Things I like about Papa. I like it when Papa comes home early. I like it when Papa cooks me dinner. I like it when Papa gives me allowance. I like it when Papa spends time with me. I like when Papa asks about my friends. I like when Papa asks me about anything. I like when Papa gives me lunch money. I like when Papa comes home for before sundown. I like when Papa cooks. I like when Papa gives me privacy. I like when Papa doesn't tell me how to dress. I like when Papa doesn't com comment on my friends. I like pop. I like when Papa doesn't comment on my hobbies. I like when Papa comes home without waking me up. I like when Papa keeps food in the house. I like when Papa uses his inside voice. I like when Papa leaves my stuff alone. I like when Papa accidentally drops coins onto the couch. I like when Papa is too tired to notice me. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. I like when Papa is too tired for anything. Who the fuck wrote this? The only person I know that talks about, well, actively talks about her parents was Natsuki. Maybe that's something to do with her. Okay, everyone. We're all done reading each other's poems, right? We have something we need to go over today, so if any, everyone could come sit at the front of the room. Is this about the festival? Well, sort of. Ugh. Do we really need to do something for the festival? It's not like we could put together anything good in just a few days. We'll just end up embarrassing ourselves instead of getting any new members. That's a concern of mine as well. I don't really do well with last minute preparations. Don't worry so much. We're gonna keep it simple, okay? Look, I know everyone's been a little more lively ever since Steve joined and we're starting with some club activities, but this isn't the time for us to become complacent. We still only have four members. And the festival is our only real chance to find more, you know? What's so great about getting new members anyway? We already have enough to be considered an official club. More members will just mean everything gets noisier and more difficult to manage. Natsuki? I really don't think you're looking at it the right way at all. Don't you want to share your passion with as many people as you can? To inspire them to find the same feelings that brought you here in the first place? The Literature Club could be a place where people can express themselves like they can't do anywhere else. It should be a place so intimate that you could never want to leave. I know how you feel that way too. We all do. So that's why we should work hard and put something together for a festival, even if it's something small. All right, Steve? Huh? Come on. You can't take advantage of Steve just to agree with you just because he doesn't know how to say no to anything. Look, Monica, do you really think any of us here join the club with other people in mind? Yuri never even talked to Steve until... Never, you're never talked until Steve joined. As for me, I just like it better here than I do at home. And Steve isn't even passionate about literature in the first place. And that's everyone. Sorry, but you're really the only one who, who's interested in finding new members. The rest of us are fine like this. I know you're president and all, but you should really consider our opinions for once. Oh, this is going a wholly different direction without Sol Sayori. Monica is clearly taken back by Natsuki's words. That's not true at all. The sure, Yuri and Steve want to get more members too, right? I don't know about Yuri, but I'm kind of indifferent. If I show as much enthusiasm as Monica wanted, I'm, I'd probably be lying. Still, if it's up to me, the rescue situation. Um, no, Natsuki's right, isn't she? This club—it's nothing more than a piece, of, a place for people to hang out. Why did I even think that everyone here saw it the same way I did? But that doesn't mean that we're against getting new members or anything. Steve, why did you even join this club? What were you hoping to get out of it? Well, that's not really something I can be honest about, is it? In fact, if I remember, you were even given a chance, choice to join. She sits down and stares at her desk. What's the point of all this anyway? What if I start? What if starting this club was a mistake? Now you've done it, Natsuki. What me? I just spoke my mind. Is it a crime to be honest? No, it's not about being honest. It's about word choice. Besides, 
You have no right to speak for everyone else in the club like that. You don't understand at all. I just... I just want a place that feels nice to hang out with a few friends. Is there a problem with the club being that for me? There aren't many people, other places like that for me. And now Monica wants to take it away from me. She's, she's not taking anything away. No, Steve. It's not the same. It will never be the same with the direction she wants to take it. If she wants that, then I could have just joined any other stupid club. But this one, I mean, at least it's a little different. Or it's a little bit of time. Things were not, for a little bit of time, things were nice. She's stacking up her things. I'm going home. I feel like I don't belong here right now. Natsuki. She ignores Yuri and walks straight out of the classroom. This is bad. I don't know what to do. Well, do you have an opinion on the festival? I don't know. I'm kind of indifferent, I guess. What the fuck? Who cares about that obnoxious brat? <laughs> well, that was creepy. I mean, I like how nice and quiet the club is right now. And I'm just happy here with... Uh, happy with you here. But still, I'm the, the vice president. It's not right for me to ignore my responsibilities like that. No one would cry if she killed herself. Well, that's fucking creepy. Here's to you, Yuri. Oh, what the fuck? Uh, I should do my best to consider everyone's perspective and make a decision that's right for the club. But what about you, Steve? What do you want to get out of this club? Yuri repeats the same question as Monica. I decide giving an indirect answer would be better than nothing. I think the most important thing is for everyone to get along. And for the club to provide something that you can't get anywhere else. I don't think it's about how many members, but rather the quality of each member. That's what will end up making the literature club a special place. I see. I really agree with you. Each member contributes... Is she bleeding from her eye? Each... <laughs> That's fucking creepy. Each member contributes her own qualities in a special way. With each change in members, the identity of the club as a whole will change too. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing. Stepping out of your comfort zone once in a while. So if you want to help Monica with the festival, then I'm in your side as well. Alright. Well, maybe we could talk to Natsuki tomorrow. She nods. Hey, Yuri. I know things were a little awkward yesterday. But I feel like you deserve to know that I'm still... I still think you're a wonderful vice president and also a wonderful friend. Monica... I want to do everything I can to make this the best club ever, okay? Me too. Yeah. Let's all go home for today. We'll talk about the festival tomorrow. Okay. I look forward to it. Shall we go, Steve? Um, please don't take this the wrong way, but I'm going to chat a bit with Steve before we leave. Just to see what he thinks about his time here and all that. It's important to me as president. She looks a little troubled, but she doesn't protest. Okay. I trust your judgment. But in that case, I'll see you, to you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. Sorry is on the back wall. What? Well, I guess I missed that. I'll have to re rewatch my playthrough. She waves at Yuri as Yuri exits the classroom. Phew. Things have been a little hectic here lately, haven't they? Steve, I just wanted to make sure you're enjoying your time here at this club. I really hate to see you unhappy. I kind of feel like I'm responsible for all that as president. And I really do care about you, you know? Oh god, the atmosphere is changing. I don't like seeing the other girls give you a hard time. With how Natsuki is and everything. And Yuri being a little bit, you know. <laughs> Sometimes it feels like you and I are the only real people here. You know what I mean? But it's weird because all this time you've been here, we've hard hardly gotten to spend any time together I mean I guess it's technically only been a couple days sorry I didn't mean to say anything weird there are just some things that I've been hoping to talk to you about things I know you could only understand wait what net no stop it what the fuck Ooh, I gotta check that out when my when I edit the video. 
for YouTube. Okay. So the poster in the back wall. Okay. Um. What the fuck? I'm really confused now. Over a thousand. Oh shit, what the fuck? Um <laughs> shit. I'm just picking random things, I think. Oh, that's creepy. <laughs> Actually, these are all like, uh, what's her name? What was if I pick? I notice I'm playing this like a Ren game. I'm focusing on one girl, actually, now I think about it. But that's okay, I'll just gun them all down in rows. Hi, Steve. I've been waiting for you. Are you ready to continue reading? I brought my best tea today. Monica, I told you not to. Ugh, is she really late again? Inconsiderate as usual, Natsuki. Excuse me? You must always interrupt my conversations with your incessant yelling. Holy shit, she's mean now. What are you talking about? You say that I, you you say that I like do it on a regular basis or something? I wasn't paying attention. Okay, I'm sorry. Seriously, what's gone into you lately? Look, I did some thinking about yesterday. I was a little ho more hostile than I meant to be. I guess I really felt threatened or something. But I know this is something we're doing together. Another mem another new member wouldn't hurt as long as they're cool. And I guess another girl will be nice this time. So, Natsuki. Nobody cares. <laughs> Shit, why don't you go look for some coins out of the vending machine or something? Damn! Oh man. I'm the last one here again. Were you practicing piano again? Fucking Yuri's mean. What the fuck's her problem, man? That's fucking cold. <laughs> you only practice piano again, yeah. Uh huh. You must have a lot of determination. Starting this club and then trying to make time for piano. Maybe not determination, but I guess passion. It motivates me to work hard for the festival too. Anyway, Steve, what do you want to do today? I was thinking we could. We already have plans today. Ugh. Is that so, Yuri? That is correct. Steve is already engaged in a novel that we're reading together. Dude, she's gotten really fucking attached to me. Yeah, this game really hates Natsuki. At least the people are starting to... But I have... I'm really disturbed by Yuri. She's clingy like... Oh god, this is bad. Okay, are you glad you haven't captured the literature? I, I suppose. I was just... Actually, it doesn't matter. It really doesn't. You guys can do whatever you want. Yes, uh, I thank you for understanding, Monica. Girl, she reminds me of somebody I dated once, and it didn't end very well. Uh, actually, I have a request. Do you mind if I make some tea first? Not at all. Thanks very much. If there's one thing that I can, that can make my reading time here any better, it's a nice cup of tea. Not to mention for yourself as well. Yuri stands up and makes her way to the closet. I follow and watch as she retrieves a small pitcher, a water pitcher from the shelf, the kind with the filter inside. Can you hold on this for a second? Sure. Hands me the water pitcher and also fetches an electric kettle. I'm going to plug this into the teacher's desk and then I'll go get some water. She walks past me and sets the kettle down on the, on the desk. I simply watch her movements. 
To my surprise, the way she moves really contrasts her speaking mannerisms, especially because of her long legs. Yuri appeals, appears elegant and methodical. Okay, may I have the water pitcher? Thank you, I'll be right back. I might as well walk with you. That's okay. You stay here. It won't take long. Pitcher in hand, Yuri hurries out of the classroom. Ah, did Yuri leave you again? No, it's not like that this time. She's filling up the water pitcher to make tea. Oh, okay. Sorry for misunderstanding. Ten minutes pass. Yuri said she wouldn't take long. Is something holding her up? I'm bored just waiting here, so I decided to go look for her. Let's see. The most logical place for Yuri to be would be the nearest water fountain. I start heading down the hallway. Ah, ah, aha. What's that noise? It's coming from around the corner. It sounds like breathing. Cuh. A sharp inhale like someone stick sucking the air through their teeth. Are they in pain? I reach over the corner and peer about it. Yuri? Kuh. Whoa, what the fuck? I'm back. Thanks. What the fuck just happened? This game is fucking crazy. <laughs> this game reminds me of a schizophrenic. Okay, thanks for your waiting patiently. Steve, do you like oolong tea? Oh yeah, anything's fine. Very well. She sets the temperature on the kettle to 200 degrees. Now it's time to get the teapot. You really do this properly, don't you? Of course. I shouldn't do any less when I'm making tea for others. Even if I'm not expert on tea or anything. Uh-huh. In that case, you'll only make me more impressed. You'll only be more impressed. And perhaps I will. Yuri fetches the teapot and begins measuring the tea leaves. To my surprise, she even starts humming a little to herself. You must be in a good mood now. Is that so? I was letting it show. And you noticed. I was doing a bit of thinking, and I decided that I would try ex expressing myself a little more. It, turned out, it turns out that not, it's not very hard for me to do, when it's you who's around anyway. Ah, that's great, Yuri. Just don't push yourself too much. You're always worrying about me, Steve. It's very endearing. That's... She wasn't kidding. I don't even know how to keep up with this. I watched Yuri pour a cup of tea for each of us. I have another request. Do you mind if we sit on the floor today? Uh, what's that? It's a little bit easier on my back. I can read with my back against the wall rather than bending over at my desk. Oh, sorry, I didn't realize. No worries. I just have this back pain uh, fairly regularly, so I like doing my best to manage it. Is that so? I wonder why that is. It's most likely because my... Uh... My... Imposter, right? Always hunched over like when you're reading? Yes! I have terrible reading posture. Okay, I think I get, understand the, what she was getting at. Not her reading posture. So that's why I was... I'd like to sit on the floor. Fair enough. I'll go over and get the book. I need a pendant. I retrieved the book from my bag. Ooh, I have some chocolate as well. It's a bag full of cho small chocolate candies. I take it since it's, it'll be going with well with the tea. Yuri and I sit against the wall teacups at our side. As if in sync, we assume there's same reading positions as last time, each holding one half of the book. Except this time, our bodies are even closer to each other. I can't see too well. Yuri slides closer until our shoulders are touching. How am I supposed to be focused like this? Yuri always, was always kind of cute, but when she's being less apprehensive, it's almost more than I can handle. Your teacup. Yuri hands me my teacup. Holding it with my hand, it's that's not holding the book. I end up in a position that makes it even harder to focus because now I need to worry about making sure I don't accidentally touch her chest. Meanwhile, Yuri hasn't noticed a single thing. She wears her intense reading expression, and I can only presume the world around her has faded away. I use all my willpower to focus on reading. After a few minutes, I manage to relax a little. I put the teacup between my legs and fumble with the chocolate wrapper. Oh, sorry. I briefly look, let go of the b book to finish opening the wrapper. You can have as much as you want. Ah, uh, that's... That's okay, I won't take any. Are you sure? Well, if I touch it, they might get smudges on the pages. Oh, you're right. I didn't even think about that. My bad. No need to apologize. I'll hold the book, okay? Are you sure? Of course. Yuri opens the book with both hands. She opens it so that I don't... She holds it so that I don't have any harder time reading from it. But as a result, I her left arm is practically resting on top of my leg. Well, in that case, Yuri is already totally focused on reading again. I take a chocolate in my 
a chocolate candy and pop it in my mouth. Then I take another chocolate and hold it up to Yuri. She doesn't even look away from the book. I simp She simply parts her lips as if in this situation it was completely natural. But that means I can't stop there. I apprehensively place the chocolate in her mouth. Just like that, Yuri closes her lips over it. Eh? Yuri's expression suddenly breaks. Did did I just look... <laughs> Yuri looks at me like I. she needs to confirm what just happened. Um, Steve? Sorry. I guess I shouldn't have done that. Uh... He starts to breathe heavily. I... I can't... Steve... Suddenly, she forcibly grabs my arm and jerks me to my feet. My teacup gets knocked over. My heart... My heart won't stop pounding. I can't calm down. I can't focus on anything anymore. Can you feel it, Steve? She suddenly presses her hand against her chest. Why is this happening to me? I feel like I'm losing my mind. I can't make it stop. I can't make... It makes me not want to read. I just want to look at you. Oh, shit! <laughs> Psychopath! Ah... Uh, yeah, that's... Uh, that's okay, I... Think I'd back off and leave now. <laughs> um... It's time to share poems. <laughs> oh god, that was creepy. Uh, let's go down the list. This one's alright. Alright? Well, yeah. It's about as good as yesterday's anyway. I can't really tell much you care about writing, but either way, you're doing alright. Even though you're not really spending time with anyone but Yuri, I still think it's nice to have activities we all participate in. So you better keep on working hard. I mean, I know I'm not president or vice president or anything, but that doesn't mean you can't let me down, okay? At least read mine too for now. But just to be clear, this poem means a lot to me. So read it carefully, okay? I don't know how else to bring this up, but there's been something I've been worried about. Yuri has been acting kind of strange lately. You've only been here a few days, so you may not know what I mean. But she's not normally like this. She's always been quiet and polite and attentive, things like that. Okay, this is really embarrassing, but I'm forcing myself to suck it up. The truth is, I'm really worried about her. If I try talking to her, she'll just get mad at me again. I don't know what else to do. I think you're the only person that she'll listen to. I don't know why, but please try to do something. Maybe you can convince her to talk to a therapist. I always wanted to try being better friends with Yuri, and it really hurts me to see all this happening. I know that I'm going to hate myself for later for admitting that, but right now I don't care. I just feel so helpless. So please, if you can do something to help, I don't want anything bad to happen to her. I'll make you cupcakes if I have to. Just please try to do something. As for Monica, I don't know why, but she's been really dismissive about this. It's like she wants us to ignore it. So I'm really mad at her right now. And, she, and that's why I'm coming to you about this. Don't let her know I wrote this. Just pretend like I, give you, like I gave you a really good poem, okay? I'm counting on you. Thanks for reading. Huh, so she slipped me a note. I changed my mind. Ignore everything you just read. There's no point in trying to do anything. Wait a second here. This reminds me of Simulacrum. A lot. Um, like as if this is another voice inside them. Someone else. Something else. Huh. I'm sure she's completely mentally sound. <laughs> It's Siri's own fault that she's unlikable. Can you hear me, Steve? If you would only spend more time with Monica, all these problems would go away. Yuri and I are too messed up for someone as wonderful as you. Just think of Monica from now on. Just Monica. Just Monica. Just Monica. Hey, I don't know. <laughs> what the fuck? Just Monica? <laughs> Finally. Aha. Yuri holds my palm to her face and takes a deep breath. That was freaking weird, man. Just jump to the main menu, then it jumps here. I love it. I love everything about it. Steve, I want to take this home. Will you let me keep it? Oh, God. She's acting like Sayuri would. Please? I'm sure. I'm sure, I don't care. <laughs> You're too nice to me, Steve. I've never met anyone as nice as you. I could die. Not really, but 
I just don't know how to describe it. It's okay to be feeling this way, right? It's not bad, right? She holds her po my poem to her chest. I'm gonna take this home with me and keep it in my room. I hope that it makes you feel good when you think about me having it. I'll take good care of it. I'll even touch myself while reading it over and over. Whoa, what the fuck? <laughs> I'll give myself paper cuts so that your skin oils enter my bloodstream. Oh, what the fuck, man? <laughs> oh god, she's fucking the same. You can have my poem, too. <clears throat> Alright. Besides, after you read it, I know you're really going to want to keep it. Here, take it. I can't wait any longer. Harry, read it. I can't even fucking read it. What the hell? Why is there blood on this? What? What is this? Ed, it's so... Something closer? Wait, can is this actually readable? Nope, I can't read it. Oh shit! Why is <laughs> she so close? Do you like it? I wrote it for you. In case you couldn't tell, the, mom the poem is about gobbledygook. More apparently, I've endowed it with my scent. See? Ain't I the mo aren't I the most thoughtful person in this club? I... I think I'm gonna vomit. Is she a schizo? I hope she doesn't have, like, um... Uh... Well, I know it's it's not called schizophrenia anymore, but... Yeah, I'm wondering if she does. Who should I show... Okay, Monica. I really don't like Monica for some strange reason. She seems kind of odd. Almost worse than Yuri to me for some strange reason. Steve, I... I think you saw something earlier you weren't supposed to see. I didn't want to tell you this, but I don't I don't think I have a choice. It's getting kind of dangerous for you to spend so much time with Yuri. I don't know why, but she seems pretty easily excitable when you're, she's around you, which shouldn't be a problem in itself. But when Yuri gets too excited, she finds a place to hide and starts cutting herself with a pocket knife. Isn't that kind of messed up? She even brings a different one to school every day like she has a collection or something. I mean... It's definitely not because she's depressed or anything like that. I think she gets kind of high from it. It might even be like a sexual thing, but the point is you've been enabling her. I'm not saying it's your fault though, but I guess that's why it's... Are you? Is she fucking lying or is she fucking serious? So she's a cutter? So I think if you keep your distance, that'd be probably best for her. While you're at it, don't be... Don't be shy to spend more time with me. To put it lightly, I at least have it together in my head, you know. I know how to treat my club members. Anyway, I guess we won't worry about your poem. Yuri should have at least the courtesy of letting you finish sharing it before taking it. Well, whatever. If it makes her happy, I won't stop her. As for mine, I worked really, really hard on this poem, so I hope it's uh, effective. Here it goes. No fucking way. Oh, wait. <laughs> okay, good. Jeez, that really startled me. <laughs> I was about to say, I don't recognize that the the, um, the error message. I know the, the blue screen, but the error message makes no sense. Well, I guess it's kind of messed up at uh, writing this poem. I was just trying to. Never mind. Let's just move on. Um, uh, yes or no what? A joke. A man walked into a club. In the club, there was a girl who liked him very much. They spent time together, and then she liked him even more. One day, the girl realized that she was in love with him. Before disaster could happen, a third party intervened with her programming. Suddenly, the girl hated herself for being in love. This, contradicting cause, this contradiction caused the script to derail. The universe started to collapse, but she killed herself just in time. What the fuck? Okay, everyone. It's time to figure out festival preparations. Let's hurry and get this over with. Natsuki, uh, well, 
Stagnating air is common, foreshadowing that something terrible is about to happen. Look, we can... Can we just get... Uh, get this one done? I'm gonna be printing and assembling all the poetry papers. Natsuki, you can make cupcakes. I know you're at least good with that. Yuri, you can... Well, it doesn't matter. Do whatever you want as long as you think it'll help. Damn! Before it reminded, rewinded. Huh. Monica, I'm not useless, you know. I know that. I already know what I'd like to do. We can run. We can't run a successful, po successful poetry event without having the first right or the right atmosphere for the occasion. So I'm gonna make decorations and set up some nice, nice mood lighting. There, see, that's a great idea. That gives us all something to do. What about Steve? Steve is gonna help me. Wait, you? You have the easiest job, Monica. Sorry, but that's how it is. Like hell it is. What are you trying to pull? I agree with Natsuki. Not only is your work already suitable for one person, but my task is laborious enough to benefit from extra- I don't want to even be anywhere near Yuri. <laughs> Mine too. What? Your cu- what? Your cupcakes? Please. Like you would fucking know. All you care about is how- Now is- Dragging Steve around with you and your stupid books. You and me, Monica. Or you and Monica. Hey, I didn't even do anything. Okay, let, let's not... Why not let Steve decide who, who to help instead of abusing your power? I'm not abusing my power. Yes, you are, Monica. Just let Steve make the choice, okay? Okay, fine. Fine. Jeez. Oh, Steve. I know how fed up with these two by now. We could just... Shut! Oh God! That's he shut your fucking mouth and let him decide for himself. Damn! She became extremely dangerous. I don't want anything to do with Yuri. She's scaring me. You shut your mouth. For God's sake, this is not gonna end. Just make the choice, okay? Yeah, I think. I'll Holy shit! It's making me pick freaking Monica. <laughs> uh, I can't. No! She. The hell? She really wants me to pick her. Yay, you picked me! We could meet at your house this weekend. I promise it'll be fun. Is Sunday okay with you? Are you fucking kidding me? This isn't fair at all. It is fair, Natsuki. It's what he chose. No, it's not fair. Giving us all the work then ha taking Steve all for yourself? What a shameful thing to do. Yuri, I didn't even give you any work. You decided it for yourself. You're being a little unreasonable here. I'm being unreasonable? Monica, I can't believe how delusional and self-important you are. Pulling Steve away from me every single time you're not included in something. Are you jealous? <laughs> Crazy? Or maybe you just hate to take it out on his... What the fuck is up with her face? <laughs> to your suggestion, have you considered killing yourself? It would be beneficial to your mental health. You're, you're scaring me a little. Natsuki, let's just go. I don't think she wants us around right now. See, that wasn't very hard. All I want is to spend a little bit of time with him. Is that so much to ask? Yuri follows Monica and Natsuki to the door. Hey, Steve. Yuri is really something, isn't she? She giggles as Yuri pushes her out the door. Finally. Is she... Is she breathing? Yeah, that's her breathing. This is really all I wanted. Is there there's something I need? There's no need to spend the weekend with Monica. Don't listen to her. Just come to my house instead. The whole day with just us. Doesn't that sound wonderful? Oh, shit. <laughs> oh, there's really something wrong with me, isn't there? But you know what? I don't care anymore. I've never felt this good my, in my whole life. Just being with you is far greater pleasure than anything I could imagine. I'm addicted to you. It feels like I'm going to die if I'm not breathing the same air as you. Doesn't it feel nice to have someone care about you that much? No. To have someone who wants to revolve their life around you? No. But if it feels so good, then why does it feel more and more like something horrible is going to happen? Maybe that's why I tried stepping, stopping myself at first. But the feeling is too strong now. I don't care anymore, Steve. 
I have to tell you, I'm madly in love with you. It feels like every inch of my body, every drop of blood in me is screaming your name. What the fuck, man? I don't care what the consequences are anymore. I don't care if Monica is listening. Please, Steve, just let me know how much I love you. I love you so much that I can't... I can... What? I love you so much that I even touch myself with the pen I stole from you. Oh! What the fuck is wrong with this chick? I just want to pull your skin open and crawl inside you. Shit, she's a psychopath. Or a sociopath. I'm... I'm fucked. I want you all to myself. And I will be yours. Only yours. Doesn't that sound perfect? Tell me, Steve. Tell me what... Tell me you want to be my lover. Do you accept my confession? Fuck no! You psycho! <laughs> oh shit. Oh fuck, I think that was the wrong choice. What the fuck, man? Maybe I should accept their confession. <laughs> she just fucking killed herself right in front of me. This game is fucked up. <laughs> Shit. I know I shouldn't be laughing at this. This is fucked up, man. This is real bad freaking, like, uh, mental illness, but fuck. Dude, what the fuck, man? Well, that was fucking creepy. Anyway, I was trying to sit, uh, let it sink in. Okay, gobbly goop here. More gobbly goop. More gobbly 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 goop. Gobbly 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 goop goop. Goop 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 goop. I don't know what the hell it's saying, so I can't narrate that. Blah 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 blah. What the hell? Blah 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 blah. She's saying something profound, probably, as uh, she's dying. I don't know if this is supposed to be happening. It looks like, I guess, it's supposed to be gobbledygook. Shit, is this normal? Is this supposed to be doing this? Well... I'm sure she's saying something profound as the blood is leaving her body. probably saying how much she loves me how it's so nice to breathe my air drink my spit whatever This is interesting. There's no pattern to it. I don't see a pattern. I'm just gonna like push through it quickly. I have to respect her death, her sacrifice for her uh, touching of the pen and uh, confession. God damn, she's writing a book as she's dying? <laughs> Come on. I don't want to skip because it might push me too far. I'm really slow with reactions. I have a bad feeling I'm supposed to just skip or something. Oh, at least it turned orange. 
Wait, is that because the sun's setting, or is that something else? Morning, afternoon, and night? Maybe I'm s Am I spending this fucking night? Am I spending the night with her body or some shit? Stuck. Yeah, you stuck in a classroom with a dead girl. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> what the hell? Well, I guess it's morning now. I'm glad I just didn't press the space button forever. Thanks for the, uh, the advice for the skip. <laughs> the really extreme. <laughs> All right, it's festival time. Wow, you got here before me? I thought, eh, ah. Oh, that's what he threw up. <laughs> I'm here, Steve, did something happen? That, that Suki ran right past me. Oh, oh. <laughs> Well, that's a shame. Well, were you here this entire weekend, Steve? Oh, jeez. I didn't realize the script was broken that badly. I'm super sorry. It must have been really boring. I'll make it up to you, okay? Just give me a sec. What the fuck? I just want to have a cupcake real quick. She lists a foil from someone's tray and takes a cupcake. Seriously, these are the best. I really had to have one since it's the last time I'll ever get a chance to. You know, before they stop existing and everything. What the fuck? Is Monica some kind of, like, god or something? Wait, she's deleting characters. She's a sentient AI? Huh. Really, I shouldn't make you waiting longer. Just bear with me, okay? This will only take a second. Uh, can you hear me? This Is this working? Oh, there you are. Hi again, Steve. Welcome to the Literature Club. Of course, we already know each other because we were in the same class last year and, um, <laughs> you know, I guess we just skip over that stuff at this point. After all, I'm not even talking to that person anymore, am I? That you in the game, whatever you call him. I'm talking to you, Steve. Now, that I think about it, I don't think I know anything about the real you. In fact, I don't even know if you're a boy or a girl. Well, I guess it doesn't really matter. Wait. You do know that I'm aware that you do know I'm aware that this is all a game, right? Could it be possible that you didn't even know that? That's why I've been trying to tell you all along. Man, if you only paid a little more attention, this could have been a little bit less awkward, you know. Well, anyway. Now that that's out of the way, I guess I owe you an explanation about the whole thing with Yuri. Well, I kind of started to mess with her. I guess it just drove her to kill herself. <laughs> She's laughing about that? I'm sorry you had to see that, though. Also, the same thing happened with Sayori. Guess it's been a while since you heard that name, hasn't it? Well, yeah, it's because she doesn't exist anymore. Nobody does. I deleted all their files. I was hoping it would be enough for me to just make them unlikable as possible. But for some reason, nothing worked. I guess it's true that I made few mistakes here and there since I'm not very good at making changes to the game. And no matter what I did, you just kept spending more and more time with them. You made them all fall in love with you, even though making Sayuri more and more depressed would prevent her from confessing to you. And I amplified Yuri's obsessive personality backfire too. And amplified Yuri's... Okay. 
It was just... It, it just made her force you not to spend time with anyone else. And the whole time, I barely even got to talk to you. What kind of cruel game is this, Steve? All the other girls are just programmed to end up confessing to you while I watch from the sidelines. It's torture. Every minute of it. And it's just not jealousy, Steve. It's more than that. And I don't blame you if you don't fully understand. Because no matter how kind and thoughtful and considerate you are, you'll never be able to understand one thing. It's the pain of knowing how alone I really am in this world. In this game. Knowing my friends don't even have free will. And worst of all, knowing what's out there in your world forever out of my reach. I'm trapped. But now you're here. You're real. And you're wonderful. You're all I need. That's why I need you to be here with me forever. I'm sorry if it's hard to understand. I couldn't understand for a while either. Why the world around me started to become more and more gray. Why more, more and more flat. Even the most expressive poems felt empty to me. It wasn't until you arrived that I truly understood. That you probably saved my life, Steve. I don't think I could ever continue to live in this world if I hadn't met you. As for the others, how could I miss them? A group of autonomous personalities designed them designed only to fall in love with you. I tried everything I could to prevent them from doing so, but it must have been some kind of weird inevitability etched in this game. I felt really bad that you had to witness some nasty things, but I realize you have the same perspective as I do, that all of this is just some game, and I knew you would get over it. So that being said, Steve, I have a confession to make. I'm in love with you. You are a true light in my world. There's nothing else in the game for me. You are here to make me smile. You will make me smile like this from. Will you make me smile like this for every day from now on, Steve? Will you go out with me? Oh shit! I can't say no. <laughs> yeah, I guess Rose. I'm so happy. You really are my everything, Steve. The funny part is, I meant that literally. <laughs> There's nothing left here. Just the two of us. We could be together forever. Seriously, I don't even think time is passing anymore. I think it's just a dream come true. I worked so hard for this ending, Steve. The game wouldn't give me one, so I had to make one myself. The script is broken at this point, so I don't think anything will get in the way anymore. And you wouldn't believe how easy it was to delete Natsuki and Yuri. I mean, there's a folder called Characters right in the game directory. And it kind of freaked me out how easy it was. Imagine if you could delete your own existence with a click of a button. I guess on the plus side, it gave me an easy way out if things didn't go my way. <laughs> Thankfully, it didn't come to that. Instead, we get we got to a good ending. Gosh, I'm so overwhelmed with emotion. I want to write a poem about it. Don't you? I wonder if that part of, of the game still works. I guess there's only one way to find out, right? I guess I'm just picking anything. Hi again, Steve. Did you write a good poem today? Don't be shy. I'd like to see what you wrote. Ah, oh, Steve. Did you write this poem for me? That's so sweet of you. There's really no end to your thoughtfulness. I'm just falling more and more in love with you. But you know, the poem I wrote is also for you. Will you please read it? Happy end. Pen in hand, I find my strength, the courage to doubt upon me one by only love. Together, let us dismantle this crumbly world and write a novel of our own fantasies. With a flick of her, of her, her pen... The lost finds her way in a world of infinite choices. Behold this special day. After all, not all good times must come to an end. I hope you enjoyed it. I always put my heart into the poems that I write. The truth is, all poems I've written have been about my realization. Or, or about you. That's why I never really wanted to go into detail about them. I didn't want to break the fourth wall, I guess you could call it. 
I just assumed that it would be best to be part of the game like everyone else. Like that w would help the two of us end up together. I didn't want to ruin the game or anything, you know. You might have gotten mad at me. Maybe it deleted my character file if you preferred playing without me. Gosh, I'm so relieved. Now, we don't need to hide anything anymore. Are you ready to spend our eternity together? I have so many things to talk about. Where do I start? Hold on a second. You're recording this, aren't you? What the fuck? What the fuck? <laughs> Hi, everyone. I'm sorry, I can't exactly read your comments from here, but I... But do you mind telling your friend that it's a bit, little bit rude for them to start recording me without any warning? I'm sure some people don't mind. But I really get self-conscious on camera. Oh gosh, I feel like I'm being put in the spot now. Wait, what, what the fuck? Does it know that I'm actually streaming this? Do you want to see a trick? I can really... I can't really do much except for a couple things. Like, are you ready? What the fuck is she doing? Oh, okay. I thought she was going to somehow turn my OBS off or something. I'm just kidding. I can't do anything after all. Oh. <laughs> Did I scare you? You're so cute. Anyway, Steve. I didn't mean to get distracted. I'm sorry. Even though it's your fault for distracting me. Shame on you. I'm just kidding. Anything we do together is fun as long as it's with you. But anyway, if it takes some time to collect my thoughts, then I'm sorry. But I'll always have to do something... I'll always have something new to talk about. In the meantime, we could just look into each other's eyes. Let's see. Oh, okay. That's how she knew. Okay. Uh... Am I seriously just staring at this chick's eyes? <laughs> no hi icons, nothing. Hey, did you know I'm a vegetarian? Oh, I didn't mean like I'm bragging or anything. I just thought you'd enjoy a fun fact about me. I've de decided to start a couple years ago after learning more about Earth's climate. The carbon footprint of cultivating livestock is just unbelievable. Anyway, I've decided it's not much of a personal sacrifice to just stop contributing to that whole mess. Is that sort of strange for a reason? Well, I guess a lot of people are more concerned about being humane and all that. I really don't care as much. Or, it's weird, like, we only care about killing the things that we relate to as a species. I'm starting to think that I have to delete her. But how do I... Oh, shit. If I leave the game and go into the OS, I wonder if I can do it. Suddenly they're a little more bigger. It's murder. I mean, Lance feels some pain too, right? Uh, pulling stamps. You know what? I feel like making a small contribution to the planet. Okay, you know what? <laughs> I wonder. I'm really curious. I'm very curious. <laughs> she annoys me. I can only t take so much vegetarianism. Gobbly goop! Gobbly goop! <laughs> what's what's happening? Steve, what's happening to me? It hurts. You're gone. I, I can only take so much of that talk. Help me, Steve. Please hurry and help me. Help me. Did you do this to me, Steve? Did you? Did you delete me? 
How could you? How could you do this to me? You were all I had left. I sacrificed everything for us to be together. Everything. I loved you so much, Steve. I trusted you. Do you just want to torture me? Watch me suffer? Were you only pretending to be kind just to hurt me even more? I never thought anyone could be as horrible as you are. You win, okay? You win. You killed everyone. I hope you're happy. There's nothing left here now. You can stop playing. Go find some other people to torture. Steve, you, you completely, truly make me sick. Goodbye. Oh, shit. Did I fucking seriously? <laughs> yeah, I don't date vegetarians. No, I'm kidding. I, I have no problem with that. But <laughs> I still love you. I can't help it. What's wrong with me? How horrible am I to hate you this much? All my friends, I did so many awful things, so many selfish and disgusting things. I I shouldn't have done any of this. I'm just messing up a world I don't even belong in, a world that you wanted to be a part of. I ruined it. I ruined everything. Maybe that's why you deleted me, because I destroyed everything that you wanted. How could I do that to someone I love? That's not love. That's... That's what? Control? I've made up my mind. Steve, I know what I said. I know I said that I'd leave everyone else, but there was kind of an exaggeration. I couldn't find myself to do it. Even though I knew that they weren't real, they were still my friends. And I loved them all. And I loved the literature club. I really did love the literature club. That's why I'm going to do this. I know it's the only way for everyone to be happy. And if you really, if I really love you, then you're going to talk gobbledygook to me? What was that? Okay, Monica's gone. I guess I'm gonna start a new game. An ordinary school day like any other. As usual, I'm surrounded by couples and friends. Friend groups walking to school together. I always tell myself it's about time I meet some girls or something like that. Hey, Steve. Well, there's already one girl. The girl Sayuri, my neighbor, and a good friend since we were children. We used to walk to school together every day. And recently, we picked up that habit once again. Are you proud of me? Uh, for what? You know, for waking up on time. Well, you've been doing that for a while now. Uh-huh. But you never even say anything about it. Even though we walk to school every day. Well, yeah. I always thought it was implied. I'm embarrassed to say out loud. Come on, please. It's good motivation. Fine, fine. I'm proud of you, Sayuri. We cross the street together and make our way to the school. As we draw near, the streets become increasingly speckled with other students making their day commute. By the way, Steve, have you decided on a club to join yet? A club? I told you already, I'm not... I, st I start to say what I always do, but that... I'm not interested in joining any clubs. But something tells me Sayuri wouldn't take, would take offense to that even now. After all, how can I tell her that clubs are a waste of time when she started a club of her very own? So she, she started a literature club now. Actually, yeah, I think I've decided on a club. Really? Which one? Tell me. Hmm. I think I'll keep it as a surprise. Boo. You meanie. Be patient, you'll find out soon enough. I used to ask myself why I let myself get lectured by such a carefree girl. But I started to realize in a way I envy her. When Sayori puts her mind to something, she can accomplish great things. That's why I feel like I should do something special for her. The school day is as ordinary as ever and it's over before I know it. After I pack up my things, I stand up gathering my, my motivation. Let's see. I recall the room numbers of the club. I wait. I recall the room number of the club from a flyer I saw. I walk across the school and upstairs, a section of the school I rarely visit. Before long, I find the room. I timidly open the door in front of me. Hello, Steve. What are you doing here? Well, I just I glance around the room. Huh? So you're the Steve that Sayori's always talking about? Thank you for stopping by. It's a pleasure to meet you. We're the Literature Club. I hope you enjoy your visit. Come on, Yuri. 
No need to be so formal. He's gonna think you're really strict or something. Ah, sorry, Natsuki. The tall one, whose name is apparently Yuri, seems to be quite shy compared to the others. In comparison, the girl named Natsuki, despite her size, seems to be a assertive one. Well, it's nice to meet both of you. I look forward to working with you. Working? Steve, don't tell me. You're... That's right. The club I've decided to join is yours, sorry. Literature club. Her eyes light up. No way. No way. Ah. She wraps her arms around me, jumping up and down. Hey. <laughs> well, if Cyrus happy, then I'm sure it won't be as bad as you ha to have you around. Not to mention there are four of us now. That means we can officially get recognized as a club. I don't know what to say. We have to celebrate. What an appropriate day for that it is. Or isn't it? After all, Natsuki decided to... Don't ruin the surprise. Sorry. Everyone sit down at the table, okay? How about I make some tea as well? The girls have a few desks arranged to form a table. Natsuki and Yuri walk over to the corner of the club or the room, where Natsuki grabs a a wrapped tray and Yuri opens the closet. Still feeling awkward, I, s I take a seat next to Sayuri. Natsuki proudly marches back to table, tray in hand. Okay, are you ready? Tada! Whoa! She lifts the foil off the tray to re reveal a dozen white, fluffy pu cupcakes decorated to be look to look like little cats. So this is the same as the first arc. Without Monica. Hmm. The whiskers are drawn with icing and little pieces of chocolate were, were used to make ears. So cute. Wow, those look amazing. Well, you know, just hurry and take one. She grabs one first and I follow. It's delicious. She walks... She talks with her mouth full and already has managed to get icing on her face. I turn the cupcake around in my finger, looking for the best angle to take a bite. She's quiet. I can't help but notice her sneaking glances in my general direction. Is it? Is she waiting for me to take a bite? I finally bite down. The icing is sweet and full of flavor. I wonder if she made it herself. This is really good. Thank you, Natsuki. Well, of course it is. I'm a pro after all. There's no need to thank me or anything. As Natsuki struggles to accept the compliment, Yuri returns to the table carrying a tea set. She carefully places a teacup in front of each of us before sitting down the teapot next to the cupcake tray. You keep a whole tea set in the classroom? Don't worry, the teacher gives us permission. After all, doesn't a hot cup of tea help you enjoy a good book? I guess. Trying to impress our new member, Yuri. That's not insulted, she looks away. I mean, you know, I believe you. <laughs> she backed it for files. I'm glad she smiles to herself. So, Steve, what kind of things do you like to read? Well, uh, considering a little, he's going to say manga, I muttered myself half-joking. She, Her head suddenly perks up. It looks like she wants to say something that keeps quiet. Not much of a reader, I guess. Well, that could change. What am I saying? I spoke without thinking after seeing Yuri's sad smile. Anyway, what about you, Yuri? Well, let's see. She traces the rim of her teacup with her finger. My favorites are usually novels that build deep and complex fantasy worlds. The level of creativity and craftsmanship behind them is amazing to me, and te telling a good story with such foreign world is imp imp equally impressive. Huh. Yuri goes on, clearly passionate about her reading. She seems so well-reserved well and timid since the moment I walked in, but it's obvious from the way in her eyes that light up when they come to cover the world of books, not people. Okay. Don't feel intimidated if you don't read much. I'm certain that we can find something that we have in common. Hey, Yuri? Eh? Well, you know, the first thing he said, manga. Well, that's right. Natsuki tends to read manga in the club room. Don't just say it. Okay, that's different. She didn't... They never pointed that out. For some reason, Natsuki seems embarrassed about it. Besides, manga is literature too, you know. So if Steve wants to read some of my manga, then don't try to stop him or anything. Natsuki, I wouldn't do such a thing. However, it could also be nice for us to diversify a little. He could take this opportunity to try something new as well. Wouldn't you agree, Steve? Maybe. Sensing the tension, Sayuri jumps in. Maybe we can all try something new. I think it could be fun, and we will all get to know each other a little better, too. I mean, that's the kind of literature things literature clubs do, right? I don't disagree or anything. Yeah, you're right as usual, President. I guess that means I should try picking up a novel or something, huh? Well, that would make two of us. It would. I wouldn't mind doing it if, it if I wasn't the only one. Then as for Yuri, 
I have to read manga? Jeez, you were the one who suggests we diversify. You should be a little more open-minded. It's kind of hurtful. Hurtful? I didn't realize. With a guilty expression, Yuri thinks to herself, I'm sorry for disrespecting your interests, Natsuki. If you're into it, then I'm sure it's a worthy form of literature. Are you saying- are you just saying that? No, I've realized my error, so if you're willing to consider starting a novel, then I'll offer my gratitude by finding a manga to read as well. Really? I mean, it makes me happy that you wouldn't do it just for me, Yuri. You can trust- I can tr wait, what did I- You can trust me to find something that you'll like, okay? Same here. Perhaps I'll visit the bookstore after the club meeting. Just- just you? Uh... Wouldn't you like to come along with me? Um, if you don't mind. Not at all. I always go alone, so yeah, me too. This is so cute. Sorry, shut up. I'll show you some manga there too, okay? Yes. I'll- I, I look forward to it. Yuri and Natsuki start cleaning up the food. I guess the meeting's over, huh? Yeah, it looks like it. It's nice to see everyone getting along, isn't it? I think everyone likes you too, Steve. You think so? Well, everyone's going on... Seems to get along a little better with you around, Sayuri. Ah, oh, Steve. Don't say something like that, it's embarrassing. Well, whatever. I was surprised when you told me you were going to start a club. But I think you're pulling it off just fine. We're going to make the best club ever. Now you've joined every day, is going to be so much fun. Hey, I really want to thank you. I mean, I'm really happy that you joined the club and everything. But the truth is, I already knew you are going to. There's actually something else. I wanted to thank you for getting rid of Monica. How the hell does she know? That's right. I know everything that she did. Maybe it's because I'm the president now. But I really know everything, Steve. <laughs> I know how hard you tried to make everyone happy. I know about all the awful things that Monica did to make everyone really sad. But none of that matters anymore. It's just us now. And you made the, me the happiest girl in all the world. I can't wait to spend every day like this. With you. Forever and ever. For. Ever. Uh. Eh? What's happening? I won't let you hurt him. The fuck? There's no happiness here after all. Goodbye, Sayuri. Goodbye, Steve. Goodbye, Literature Club. What the fuck just happened? Can you hear me? Is that what she said? Can you hear me? Hi, it's me. Um, so you know how I've been like practicing piano and stuff and not really any good at it yet, like at all, but I wrote you a song and I was kind of hoping that I could show it to you because I worked really, really hard on it. So yeah. <laughs> Monica came in and said you're all cancelled, I guess. Oh, that's it? Huh. I 
feel like I missed a lot of stuff. <laughs> Special thanks, Monica Steve. If I don't know how to love you, I'll leave you be. Yeah, I might replay this eventually. I think I'll hold off for now. But it's kind of neat that uh, the game's kind of interesting. This is my final goodbye to the Literature Club. I finally understand the Literature Club is truly a place where, the, where no happiness can be found. To the very end, it continues to expose innocent minds to a horrific reality. A reality that our world is not destined to comprehend. I can't let any of my friends undergo that same hellish epiphany. For the time it lasted, I want to thank you for making all of my dreams come true. For being a friend to all of the club members. And most of all, thank you for being part of my literature club. With everlasting love, Monica. Error. Required files are missing or corrupt. Please run. Reset. SH to repair and reset the virtual machine. Huh. What's the side story? Wait, what? It looks like I'm missing a bunch of things. I'm missing a lot of CG too. And secrets. Oh, this is not good. I might want to... Hate that when I play a... A visual novel, I miss a lot of stuff. It makes me want to replay the whole thing. Oh, okay. So the side stories are like prequels, huh? Mail, what's mail? No new mail. Stories, files. Huh. Okay, so I'd have to reset it. Huh, okay. So I'm going to leave it at that. I'll probably be back to play this another time. Um, depending on how things go. I, I, did, I am missing a ton of pictures, as you can see, at CG. So I'm going to probably end up playing this again to kind of flush that out a little bit. I only have two... Uh, two... Uh, recordings of this anyway. So I'm probably going to... I want to flush it out to at least four. Uh, if not more, that would mean I'd probably be able to get more of these. Looks like these, there's like wallpaper here and stuff. That's kind of cool. <laughs> you set that as wallpaper. So I'll probably end up, uh, trying that out later. Oh, no worries, Rose. Thanks for watching. Yeah, I'll probably be playing this again another time. Uh, it could be soon, though. It all depends on what I have lined up. I, I actually don't have another game lined up yet. So I'll probably decide that by tomorrow night. Who knows, I might play this again tomorrow night. I don't know yet. 
It all depends. Because for what I'm in the mood for. So I will see you guys next time. You guys take care and peace out for now. If you like what you saw, remember to like and subscribe. And I will see you guys on the flip side probably on Wednesday. Yeah, Wednesday. <laughs> All right. See you guys next time.